हेलो जी सर जमील मेरी आवाज आ रही है आपको जी रिजवान आवाज आ रही है आपकी ओह वेरी गुड चलें जी वी लवली लवली अच्छा लेट मी प्लीज गिव मी जस्ट अ मिनट एंड यहां पे ये ये वाला स्पीकर कौन सा है ये वाले जमील जरा कुछ कहिएगा आवाज आ रही है हेलो जी 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 परफेक्ट परफेक्ट द थिंग सीम्स टू बी वर्किंग फाइन कैन यू स्टिल हियर मी जी बिल्कुल एग्जैक्टली रिजवान मैं सुन सकता हूं चलें बहुत अच्छा हो गया चलिए यहां पर हमारा जो है वो बेसिक सेट हो गया अब लेट्स जस्ट गिव पीपल अ फ्यू मिनट्स टू जॉइन एंड देन वी कैन बिगिन जी प्लीज जब आप जब आप समझे thank you it's a, it's a pleasure to have you jameel as always and uh, sorry you had to wait we were having some technical difficulties trying to connect nahi nahi bilkul bhi nahi main waise bhi main chai peene gaya hua tha tea room mein aan aur aan karke bilkul us tarah jaisa student online class lete hain na bilkul theek hai bilkul koi masla nahi bilkul sahi ho gaya और अब इसके ऊपर आपने कोई जो लेटेस्ट रिजल्ट्स हैं वो इंक्लूड किए सारे कुछ शामिल किया बिल्कुल लेटेस्ट हैं बिल्कुल जो एल एच सी का जो अभी जो रीसेंट कोई न्यूज वगैरह आ रही थी इस हवाले से यार ये काम रिजवान बेसिकली ना समझ लें कि ज्यादा बेसिक नेचर का है एल एच सी से ये सिंपल क्यू डी है इसमें इवन स्टैंडर्ड मॉडल भी नहीं है तो ये बहुत सिंपल नेचर का काम है नहीं नहीं मैं मैं खाली ये कह रहा था कि ये बहरहाल जो है थ्री एंड फोर बॉडी लेप्टॉन लेप्टॉन स्टेट है ना हाँ हाँ लेप्टॉन ये ये टेट्रा को आप दूसरे नहीं है अगर आप कहेंगे तो एंड पे मैं पांच मिनट उन पे भी बात कर लूंगा कोई मसला नहीं 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 ठीक है आप इसके वो उसके अगर आप वो फिर आपसे क्यू एन ए में पूछ लेंगे चल उसके जो करेंट स्टेटस उसका क्या चल रहा है एक्सपेरिमेंटल स्टेटस क्या चल रहा है वो आपसे बाद में क्यू एन ए में डिस्कस कर लेंगे ठीक है मैंने 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 ये गौर से नहीं देखा आपका टाइटल ठीक है थैंक यू एवरीबडी फॉर ज्वाइनिंग अस फॉर टुडे फिजिक्स का लोकियम इट्स लवली टू हैव एवरीबडी ओवर and we're having this online session after a bit of a while uh so those of you who are from lums do know that that this thing has been uh, continuing in this semester regularly lekin jo hamari online audience hai usko shayad lag raha hoga ki ab seminar series jo hai wo madham pad gayi hai uh, that's not exactly true we still have a colloquium uh, once a week and uh, today we are absolutely delighted and thrilled that jameel is our speaker jameel is a professor at kaidazm university and a visiting professor at alberta and uh, he is uh, a very loved teacher excellent researcher and a very good friend it's always a pleasure to have him uh, jameel it's all over to you please go ahead ओके थैंक यू वेरी मच रिजवान मैं जरा फुल स्क्रीन कर लूं अगर आप देखें आपको ये सही नजर आ रहा है या नहीं जी जी हम देख बिल्कुल परफेक्ट नजर आ रहा है जी इट्स वर्किंग फाइन डू यू वांट टू शेयर योर वीडियो वी कांट वी कांट क्वाइट सी यू एक्चुअली यार मेरा जो ये Zoom है ना ये मुझे बहुत कुछ नहीं करने दे रहा फेयर इनफ फेयर इनफ दैट्स फाइन दैट्स ओके दैट्स ओके इवन मैं तो हाइड भी करना चाह रहा हूं कुछ चीजें वो हाइड भी नहीं कर रहा तो इसलिए ना सही आप स्क्रीन शेयर जो है ना आप अगर स्क्रीन शेयर में आप अगर इस स्पेसिफिक खाली की नोट को शेयर करें तो शायद मसला आपका हल हो जाए मैं वही करने लगा हूँ बिना आप देखिएगा कि क्या आप फुल स्क्रीन हो जाता है जी फुल स्क्रीन हो गया है हमें फुल स्क्रीन नजर आ रहा है आपको अगर नहीं भी नजर आ रहा है तो दैट्स ओके हमें फुल स्क्रीन पे आपकी सिर्फ ये की नोट नजर आ रहा है और कुछ नहीं नजर आ रहा अच्छा वो असल में ना इस पे कर्सर फिर नहीं चलता ना लेकिन कोई बात नहीं खैर कर्सर की जरूरत भी नहीं पड़ेगी कोई ऐसा इशू नहीं है आप कोई आ, आ, अच्छा नहीं आप इसके अंदर एक सेकंड यहाँ पे अगर आप ऑप्शंस में देखें तो वो आ, शायद आपको जूम दे दे आ, इनका एक पॉइंटर होता है जी 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 मैं व्यू करता हूँ जूम पे ठहरिएगा जरा हंड्रेड सॉरी हंड्रेड कर लेता हूँ 
ये मैं नहीं कह रहा था मैं कह रहा था जूम ऐप का जूम ऐप का आप इसको फुल स्क्रीन रहने दे और उसको ट्राई करें वहां पे जो है ना आपके पास आने चाहिए ऑप्शन आनी चाहिए एक उसकी पेन सा बना हुआ ना पेन पेन आ जाना चाहिए या एक्चुअली आप उसको सेलेक्ट ही कर सकते हैं फ्लैश लाइट भी सेलेक्ट कर सकते हैं ठीक है मैं अभी देखता हूँ ठहरिएगा जरा मुझे थोड़ा सा टाइम दे दे मैं जरा टेक यूर टाइम टेक यूर टाइम दैट्स ओके नो प्रॉब्लम नो हावे चले रिजवान मेरे ख्याल है शुरू करते हैं अगर कर्सर की जरूरत पड़गी ना तो फिर मैं देख लूंगा क्या करना है टाइम नहीं वेस्ट करते ठीक हो गया वो चल नहीं रहा इस पे भी ना अनफॉर्चुनेटली मैंने अभी सर में जूम नया डाउनलोड किया है पुराना वो आउटडेट हो चुका है That's okay, no problem. Sorry. Please go. लेकिन उम्मीद है कि कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं आएगी इनशाला ठीक है ना नहीं नहीं आई एम श्योर इट्स बी फाइन ठीक है ओके थैंक यू सो थैंक यू वेरी मच रिजवान फॉर दिस वेरी काइंड इन्विटेशन एंड लवली टू टॉक विद यू लाइक ऑलवेज um uh, actually uh, i i i would like to come to lums but you know because of this political uncertainty in pakistan the traveling is bit difficult but i i hope i'll be able to make it uh, some day maybe this year or next year inshallah so uh, today i am going to talk about the three and four body lepton and lepton hadronic lepton hadron states what do we mean by the lepton hadron state because that's something which is new uh it is a state in which we have electrons and a, and a proton so uh, i'll i'll come to this state because it is of the interest of the experimentalists these days those who are working on the low energy positron beams so um this is the work which which basically we have done with the professor anjay cherneski uh, over uh, the, the postdoc in his group dr wenchen mubashir and the samuel Uh, these two uh, actually mubashir is a graduate student and samur is now a phd student in some university in us so um before i go to uh, to um, three and four more than two body states let me briefly explain the two body states in the lepton sector we know that the best two body lepton state that we have studied in the quantum mechanics is the hydrogen atom so how we solve the hydrogen atom we know that the proton is in finitely heavy compared to that of the electron in 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 some term because 1836 is significantly larger you know so we can take it in finitely heavy we sit at the proton and calculate the energy spectrum of the electron because the schrodinger equation give us the energy spectrum and you know that if you calculate the binding energy of the electron it comes out to be minus 13.6 electron volt in the n is equal to 1 state and we know that if we we use the, the reduced mass then we can calculate the energy of the hydrogen atom in term of the reduced mass and it 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 remains almost minus 13.6 but this is not the case if we replace proton with a positron because now we have two particles they are of equal mass therefore the reduced mass is half of that of the half of the mass of the electron and so is the binding energy because we know that binding energy is directly proportional to the mass of the particle that is revolving around the other particle and therefore it it is half therefore the binding energy is not minus 13.6 electron volt but it is minus 6.7 electron volt and also its uh, its lifetime is, uh, is 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 small it's around a bit over 100 nanoseconds therefore these are unstable states unlike the hydrogen atom and in this case the proton and electron they come to a place and annihilate each other and the mo- the annihilation process is either through two photons even number of photons or odd number of photons so let me explain why we have even an odd number of photons we know that the electron and positron they can be in spin one state because two spin half particles if we add their spins the net spin is either zero or one the spin zero state is known as a parapositronium and spin one state is known as an orthopositronium and spin one state has an orbit total angular momentum 1 and the spin zero state has the total angular uh, uh, total angular momentum 0 therefore in order to conserve the linear the, the the angular momentum total angular momentum spin zero state has to decay at least to two photons because to even number of photons you can say because if we have the even number of photons 
they are spin one particle, so we can get spin zero by adding their third component of their spin also. For, for, for orthopositronium, that is spin one. Odd number of photons should come out because to have the net spin to be one, we have to have three photons. Now the question arises: why we can't have one photon? The reason is that for the one photon, you cannot conserve the energy and the momentum. So momentum conservation requires that at least we have two photons for parapositronium and three photons for the orthopositronium. And if you calculate its decay rate, you can see that its decay rate is, is proportional to psi zero squared. What do we mean by the psi zero squared? Psi zero is basically the wave function at the origin. And the wave function at the origin is nothing but it is an expectation value of the Dirac delta function. And we call this as a coalescence probability. Mean when electron and proton, they come to a one point. Otherwise they have a distance R between them. And if R becomes zero, it means that these two comes to a point and there is a wave function at the origin in this case. Can you, can you, can you hear me? Yeah, exactly, Rizwan, please. आप अभी पहली स्लाइड पे हैं या आगे निकल गए हैं? नहीं नहीं मैं पहली मैं मैं सेकंड स्लाइड में जो पॉजिट्रोनियम जिस पे वो एक शो हो रहा है मैं 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 मैंने कहा कि कहीं ऐसा तो नहीं है कि वो जो है आपने जो फुल स्क्रीन किया हुआ है आप अपने अपनी प्रेजेंटेशन में आप पांचवीं स्लाइड पे हो और हमें सिस्टम What happens if we add one more particle to this system? Means if we make a three-body state. So next slide now. We know that quantum mechanics work for two-body system. We can calculate exactly the energy and the other properties for the two-body system. But when we have more than two-body system, we have to adopt some approximate methods. And one of our favorite method is the perturbation theory. The, the 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 idea of the perturbation theory is just like the Euler Maclaurin series in the in the in the in, the, in, the, in that you have learned in the um, second year of your education means if we have some function of x let's say and we have a small parameter that we can add to the x it means that if this parameter is small we can make an expansion around this parameter this is exactly the idea of the perturbation theory also so the whole idea is that we need a small parameter apart from this there is another very powerful technique that we can use an, as an approximate method is the variational principle so what is the idea of the variation principle the good thing is we don't need any kind of a small parameter for which around which we can make any kind of an expansion and this this variational principle is always used to calculate the ground state energy and the wave function of the system so let me explain you what what we mean by the variational principle suppose i know that there is a state which is the lowest lying state which is a ground state we denote it with a zero in a cat form and if i apply the energy operator on the this state we get the ground state energy so any any state here instead of a zero we have to have n on the right side there is a typo sorry so suppose i have an nth state if i apply the energy on this one and if state this state is other than the ground state then its energy is higher than the ground state now what we do in the variational principle we suppose an arbitrary ground state and give a bold guess to the ground state energy we somehow optimize this wave function and try to calculate the ground state energy and the ground state wave function it means we introduce some parameters in the in the in the in the in the, in the, in the calculation and there is no requirement that the, those parameters should be small for example you can see that i have written energy in term of these variational principle these variational parameters now if this energy is the ground state energy it means this should be the minimum energy so how i can choose the make the energy minimize i differentiate with respect to these variational parameters and put them equal to zero this is the whole idea of the of the variational principle so if i explain it in one line 
we introduce variational parameters in the ground in the in the wave function and those and then we differentiate with respect to those variational parameters to the energy in order to find the minimum energy so uh, there is an example for it that i have written every one of us knows that the wave function of the hydrogen atom in the ground state they are spherically symmetric and if you just choose this trial wave function of the hydrogen atom like this one you can see that i have considered exponentially decaying wave functions we know that the hydrogen wave functions are not like this here d is a variational parameter that i have chosen and we know that the hamiltonian for the for the hydrogen atom has a kinetic energy and a coulomb type potential energy I mean coulomb type mean like 1 over r squared here z you can take equal to 1 because for the hydrogen z is equal to 1 now what we do we calculate the expectation value of the energy by using this hamiltonian because d is my variational parameter i minimize that i basically take the derivative of this energy that i obtained as an expectation value take its derivative with respect to d and put it equal to zero and then i can find the value of d and this value of d when i put this in the wave function it gives me the minimum it gives me the true wave function and if you put this d over here you can see that you can exactly reproduce the ground state and wave function of the hydrogen atom so this is how this works so there is an exercise for uh, for, for some of you if you are interested if you, instead of this you can choose this gaussian wave function for the for the hydrogen atom again calculate the expectation value minimize it with respect to d then you can get this this as a minimum energy which i have written over here and in this block which is 0.8 fine time e naught and you see that you have done a very bold guess and still the energy that you have got is close to the ground state energy i never claim that it will be the exact ground state energy but it will be the minimum energy therefore it lies close to the ground state energy so i hope i have explained this idea of the variational principle so this variational principle we use to calculate when we have more than two particle system so now what we have done is along with the ps atom we have added one more electron because we know that this positronium which is electron positron system is neutral therefore adding an electron make it an ion it is known as a positronium ion now there are there are basically three coordinates that we can use and they are the relative coordinates the position of electron with respect to the positron the position of other electron with respect to the positron and the inter inter electron distance so these are the three parameters I mean potential energy has these three terms between electron positron two electrons and the wave function that we can write is the following we have considered the two electrons to be in spin singlet state because if you know up has third component half down has third component minus half therefore it is zero and because of this negative sign in between them it is an anti-symmetric state if we have a plus sign over here then it is a symmetric state it means it is zero it is m is equal to zero value from total spin equal to one and this minus sign ensures us that it is the m is equal to zero for s is equal to zero when total spin is zero and we have considered the initial state positron to be spin up by the way spin wave functions doesn't matter whatever you choose because the spin wave functions they have to be separately normalized and the position wave function they have to be separately normalized you can see that i have considered these gaussian bases and a b and c are the unknown parameters so what we have done is there was a code that was written by uh, by by angie and his postdoc back in 2008 we have used the, those th that complicated code and run it for our system and get the binding energy of of the of the positronium ion to be this one and by the way it is a stable particle it has a lifetime of around if i, I if i remember correctly half a nanosecond or something like that so after half a nanosecond basically it 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 decays and how it decays again through electron positron annihilation now what is the difference between positronium ion decay and the positronium decay that i have considered earlier if you remember i can take back to this slide i considered that if the electron positron annihilate in spin one state it means we have two photons in the final state we can never have one photon 
But in the PS ion case, we have a one photon decay possible. Why one photon decay? Because you can you can just look at these arrow. Spin up positron, spin down electron. It means net m value for this state is zero. So it is kind of a para positronium. It has to decay to two photons. So it decays to two photon. One photon is absorbed by the electron, and electron remains the electron basically changes energy and not the spin. And then, of course, there is a cross diagram. Why cross diagram? Because there are two photons, they are indistinguishable. Therefore, we can make a cross diagram also, and we can divide with the number of indistinguishable particles. If you come to this point, you can see that no electron and positron, they have the same spin, third component of spin. It means they are in spin triplet state. Therefore, they goes to an odd number of photon, and you can say that one photon, and then this photon is absorbed, and then electron bremstall this photon later. So again, you have one photon in the final state. In order to make this calculation simple, we have considered photon to be along the z axis because we are always free to choose over axis of symmetry because that is exactly the same of axis of symmetry along which we have chosen the spin of the electrons. So, and it is moving along z axis and is right handed polarized. We can do calculation with right handed polarized, just multiply it with by two and it automatically take care of the left handed polarization of the photon. No, there are two ways to calculate this, uh, do this calculation. One way is you can use this automated generated uh, um, uh, diagrams from fine arts, get the amplitude from there, square the amplitude and apply a fermion spin some method and calculate the decay rate. Like exactly the Fermi golden rule you can apply, like uh, what I want to say is. The other technique is very simple which basically we have developed, but not we have developed, but uh, you can say my, my, my Professor NJ has developed it long ago, but we have used it over here. What you can do is, because initial state particles, they are almost at rest. I mean, inside the positron, they are, their momentum is very, very small compared to their mass. That's why I said that it is, it, it is, it is a low energy physics. So what, they have, what we can use is we can use the rest spinner in the initial state. And we can use the spinners that carry the momentum in the final state. So with a particular spin, you can always express your spinners in the form of the gamma matrices. So this is how we have done it. When a positron is spin up, electron is spin up, with this combination, you can write one combination in the gamma matrix. What you do is you can write a matrix and that matrix you can always express in terms of the gamma matrices. And these are the four combinations that we use, that we need rather. And by using these combinations, we have calculated the amplitude. And amplitude is coming out to be, a, to be a scalar number. This is very different from the standard technique of the particle physics, where we take a trace, not at an amplitude level, but at an amplitude square level, A mod square. Because when we take A mod square, then we can recycle, then we can apply the cyclic property of the spinners and then make a trace. So the, the power of this technique lies in the fact that you can take a trace even at, the, at an amplitude level. Again, this formula is written in the book of Pascal and Schroeder that you can always calculate the free amplitude. You can use the free amplitude to calculate the bound state amplitude along with, with these, these uh, uh, numbers. You are functions like energy of the particles and the wave function at the origin because these things take care of the bound state dynamics. And this is the free state amplitude that you have calculated upstairs. Now, what you do is you calculate the positronium ion and the result is this one. Again, this is a wave function at the origin. And if you calculate the value of the wave function at the origin, it comes out to be of the order of 10 to the power minus five. And you can see that this result was calculated long ago by Khrushchev. But, but his, his method is very, uh, you can, so it, it requires a computation because it has written the amplitude and then there are four amplitude and do you need 16, uh, diagram, 16 uh, four square amplitude to solve and you definitely need a computer. But in this case, you need not any kind of a computer. You just do it this calculation by hand on a piece of paper and that's all. So this is the power of this simple technique. By the way, what happens if I add one more positron to the system. 
it means it again becomes neutral and it becomes a dipositronium. So the dipositronium means that this dipositronium has two electrons and two positrons. Now the system is even more complicated because there are, you can say, six relative positions and there are the six kinetic energy terms. Again, we use this variational code that was developed and we have calculated the binding energy, which is a ground state energy. By the way, they bind in the ground state energy. And this PS2 was, was discovered by Mills uh, almost 50 years ago, uh, for 50 years ago, exactly. So um, this, was, this he has ob observed in a, in, a, in a lab too. As far as the spin wave function is concerned, the two electrons are in spin singlet state, the two positrons in spin singlet state. That is why you can write this wave function over here. Here, A, B, C, D, and 2F, E, and F, they are the variational parameters. Again, we use this variational code, minimize the energy with respect to these variational parameters, calculate the binding energy, and the result is coming out to be like this one. And in this particular case, the coalescence probability of electron and positron means when electron and positron, they comes to a one point, then the annihilation probability is two into 10 to the power minus two. Because again, we are considering this, the, the decays of this dipositronium. So we exactly apply the same technique that we have done. And what we do is, first we consider the two photon decays. Because it is a spin zero state, therefore it will definitely decay to an even number of photon and two photon at the minimum. So you can see that the first possibility is when electron positron, which I am basically uh, encircling with this cursor, they are decaying, they are in spin zero state. So they decay to two photon and one photon is absorbed by the second electron and then it make a propagator and that basically that electron later annihilate with the positron and it emits a photon. So in this way, you have the four, two photons in the final state. These type of diagrams where electron positron are annihilating in a spin, in a spin uh, singlet state, there are 16 diagrams of this type. And then there are, there are the states in which electron positron, they are annihilating in spin triplet state and there are 16 diagrams of this kind. And then there are other diagram where electron positron is annihilating in singlet state, but the propagator virtual state, I mean, electron after emitting a photon be, remains electron with change energy, absorb the photon, which is basically emitted by the electron positron, and then later annihilate with the positron to emit this photon. These are known as the C type diagram. By the way, if you calculate the result of C-type diagrams, the result comes out to be zero. We don't have any argument for that, but the result is zero. Exactly, you apply the same technique that I have, I have mentioned earlier, this one that you write spinner in term of gamma matrices. If you calculate the decay rate, uh, sorry, amplitude, it comes out to be like this one. And then you can see similarly for the B-type diagram, the result is this one. So here is the here, here you can get an idea of the uh, about the power of this technique, because you can see that there are 40 diagrams. And at an amplitude, you have this 40 diagram. And if you multiply it with the, with the conjugate of the amplitude, you have 40 more amplitude. So it means you have 1600 amplitude that you have to solve if you follow the conventional particle physics technique. But with this technique, you have to solve very few diagrams, maybe maybe two diagrams for A type, two diagrams from B type, and then you can apply this uh, permutation symmetry and write the result for the other. So in this way, this technique is, 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 is quite simple. And this amplitude that comes out to be for two photon is, is a number. Now, what was the motivation to calculate these, this decay rate? Because people have already done it. We are not the first who did it, but we are the first who did with this technique. So this, we can take a credit at least. So we have calculated the decay rate. And here, the interesting thing is at this point where we have a factor of two. But in literature, the factor is not, factor is not two, but this is a very weird factor, 521 over 1024. So to quantify in literature, they have underestimated this decay rate by a factor of four. By the way, these are the precision calculations. Therefore, a factor of four means a lot especially when the decay time is of the order of 
a half a nanosecond or so. And you can see the decay rate even 3.5, 10 to the power minus 11. So very, very small. Therefore, even these numbers, if the, the slight change of these numbers will definitely matter. Now, just in line with this one, we have calculated also the radiation-less case. What do we mean by the radiation-less case? When the photon emitted from, because electron positron, whenever they annihilate it, each other, they will definitely emit a photon. So now the photon emitted by them, they will be absorbed by the, uh, absorbed by the uh, electron and positron, or rather you can say that they can further uh, decompose to electron positron state, whatever you want to say you can. Again, you have, we have considered a particular spin of the final state, positron and electron. We know that initial state has a net angular momentum equal to zero, therefore the final state has to have, final state needed to be, to be in spin zero state. Therefore, the, if positron is spin down, electron is spin up. So this is a convention that we have fixed. Why we fix the convention, as I have already mentioned, so that we can write a particular spin, sp a particular uh, spinners that can take care of these spins. And by combining those spinners, we can make the traces even at an amplitude level. So again, we have four diagrams of this type, 16 diagrams when this electron positron and helium pair is in spin singlet state. And there are eight diagrams of this type when electron absorbs first and then emit, which was later absorbed by the positron and so on and so forth. Again, you can see that you have uh, 32 diagram in this, uh, sorry, 36 diagram in this case. The amplitude of all these diagram is coming out to be zero and plus other are contributing to be non-zero. By the way, this calculation doesn't matter. I have the details of these calculations. So if anyone is interested, I can, I can share that draft with you also where I have done all this calculation even by hand. So you can have it. So now if you calculate the decay rate, the decay rate, it comes out to be like this one. And what is this delta function expectation value? Basically, this is the value of wave function at the origin because all the four particles are coming at one point. So in a, in a, in a fancy language, we call it as coalescence probability of all the four particles at a point. And you get, we, you see, we got this result of 27. And this result was calculated in 2009 by, by, a, by a famous guy whose name is A.M. Is a. M. Froloff. He's working in some chemistry department at the University of McGill or so. So this was a very well-cited paper, by the way. Uh, I, actually, even before that, they, he has done this calculation with, uh, with Khrushchev. And they got this result to be 147. And you know, it took us almost two years to convince ourselves that their calculation is wrong because we, because this is a good, is, is a nicely cited paper in which they have done this calculation fairly nicely. Therefore, uh, we, we, we want to get a confidence that their calculation is not correct. And finally we did it and our result is this 27. Why we, why you, why uh, we think that these are the, these decays are important. Number one is a theoretical reason. And the theoretical reason is that the two photon decays and this decay which, which involves zero photon, they are of the same order in alpha. So they are of the order of alpha to the power 13, both. Therefore, if they are of the same order in alpha, alpha is one over 137, rest is just a number, therefore, if in the experiments we observe electron positron in the final state, there is also a possibility that we can also observe the two photon final state. So that is why we have calculated both decay because they are all, almost of the equal, equal uh, magnitude, you can say. Maybe an order of magnitude differ due to the phase space. Rest is just the same. And that's why you can see it is of the order of 10 to the power minus 11 because the phase space is 11 times larger than that one. And you can easily check it that the phase space is larger by this number. And with one, 147, you can see that they have overestimated the decay rate by 5.44. And when we took the ratio, previous studies mean the, the calculation that the, done by Khrushchev uh, and this by uh, A. Love. If you take the ratio of the radiation less case to the radiation case, the answer comes out to be 250. But in our case, the answer comes out to be 12. And we explained this with this factor of 12 by through the phase space. 
that some of the factor is coming from the amplitude and it has to be there because in the final state we have the fermions in the first case in electron positron case and the other factor is coming from the phase space so those who are interested they can just have a look at this paper which was published in 2021 and by the way um, i i have i have given this uh, project to one of my my students ziad and I asked him to do these calculations by following by, by, by following the standard techniques of particle physics. That is, generate the Feynman diagram through fine arts, calculate them through fine calc, do this laborious work computationally, and see if you can reproduce these results. And luckily, we reproduce these results also and with that technique. Because in the literature, people have followed that technique. Therefore, we thought that we should also submit this paper, though nothing new, but even with their technique, the results are wrong. So that is why we have submitted this paper. So it is still in process. Let's see what is the fate of this paper. So with this one, you can see that I have ended this uh, electron, posit electron positron systems. Now let me move to this lepton hadron system, which is known as a positronium hydride. Now how we prepare positronium hydride? Actually, um, the experiment that was done by, uh, uh, that was done is, like this one that you bombard a beam of positron on a methane. And when it slows down, then the positron rests over there and it makes a state which is known as a positronium hydride. Why, what do we mean by positronium hydride? Positronium mean electron positron and hydride come from this word hydrogen because we know we have a proton and electron. And by the way, this is a stable state. Its lifetime is 0.69 nanoseconds. Again, we use this variational principle, variational tool. And if I can show you still the code is running at my laptop because I wanted to take some other bases also because the referee asked us, we submitted the paper and referee asked us to calculate the numbers for lower bases also because we consider the thousand bases, he asked us to calculate for let's say 250 bases also. So um, what we have done is you can, here the first time I am presenting the results, this is you see, this is the expectation value of the positron and the proton at one expectation value of the distance between positron and proton. This was calculated by Bioben and long ago, and you can see that over results match with them. Fairly good because they have for, for thousand bases, because you know that everyone uses its own variational code. And what the code we used is developed by uh, Mariusz and Anjay. So the, the, the reference is here where they have they have given the details of the code. And you can see that our results are in, in somehow in a good agreement with those up to six digit in certain cases. For us, because we are considering the decays, therefore for us, the important thing is the expectation value of the delta functions. By the way, the two particle delta function, they are, their, their value is not stable if you calculate in a conventional way that you, that you calculate the expectation of value of the delta function between two states. Therefore, the Drachman is name, name of the person is Drachman. He has written some identities that can be used. And in this way, you can get a fairly stable value of the uh, Dirac delta function. And this is given in the literature. We have also used it for the two particle delta function, but we don't need it in this calculation. Therefore, therefore I hammered appended it in, 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 this, uh, in this slide. So again, we study the positronium, the, uh, the annihilation of electron positron in the, in the positronium hydride. Now you can see that there are two ways. One way is that there are, this is a four body system, the electron positron that annihilates and it is the electron absorbs the photon and then moves. Proton remains as a spectator. So this is a one type of calculation. This is exactly the same calculation that we, can, that we have done for the positronium ion because the proton is not taking part in the calculation. Except this value of the wave function at the origin. The wave function of the origin is an order of magnitude larger in this case. Why? Because the ratio of the distance between electron and positron in positronium ion and in positronium hydride, that is different. And if you calculate the corresponding volume, the volume is different by a factor of 10. And that is why this wave function at the origin is different by a factor of 10. Similarly, the other possibility is that when the proton absorbs the, 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 the photon and later emit it, this is very, very suppressed. Therefore, it is ignorably small. And hence, at the leading order, 
the, the dominant contribution comes from the case when electron absorbs the photon and the result is this one. Now, the other possibility is the radiation annihilation, radiation less rather. When the photon that are emitted from the electron positron annihilation, they are absorbed. This is again a four body process, exactly the same way of doing calculation. You can calculate the amplitude to be like this one and at the leading order, I mean, if you consider proton to be infinitely heavy. By the way, this calculation is very interesting if you consider proton to be infinitely heavy. This is exactly the same calculation that we have done in the Bjorken and Trell, that emission, that, that a particle that moves in a field, it, 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 it emits some photon, which is a conventional phenomenon of a Bremsstrahlung. So you can apply exactly those that, that idea to calculate this decay rate. So what is the idea? The decay rate is going through, the, is, is, the decay rate is happening in the field of the proton. So in the paper, we haven't presented the calculation like this one where I am, where I am, you know, I mean, um, the, the way I have done it over here. But in paper, we have presented the calculation in the way that I, I said that the decay is happening in the field of the proton. And you can see that the result comes out to be this one. Result is the same, by the way. So fair enough, we can calculate the decay rate and make a prediction. What was the idea to calculate these, these rates? There are many papers, maybe 30, 40 papers written in the positronium hydride, but no one has ever done this QED calculation. Everyone estimated the decay rate of the positronium hydride from the PS2, but just making small changes. But this that was not correct. Not even a single answer comes closer to that one. Therefore, this, this QED calculation of these are missing in the literature. The, I, the, the first idea is the, of this one is to check over the variational code, code to see if we can reproduce the numbers. And the second idea is to, to, to fill this missing gap that the, Q, that the QED calculation for the positronium hydride can also be done and cannot be estimated from the PS2 calculation. Now, maybe any one of you can ask me a question that because in the final state, we have a proton and electron both why not they can bind if they have the small energy? Yes, there is a possibility that the proton and the electron after absorbing a photon, they can, they can bind. And in this case, we have the hydrogen in the final state. It means now you can see that you have a bound state in the initial state, you have the bound state in the final state, standard calculation of the quantum mechanics. You can calculate the probability that the final state hydrogen will be in in the S state, in the P state, 2S state, whatever you can calculate. And you can see that we have calculated these probabilities in the 1S, 2S, 2P, et cetera state. The dominant contribution as expected is coming out to be 1S state. Why? Because these are the low energy proton and electron. Therefore, they can bind in the ground state. And we have, we have basically compared them with the earlier results in the literature. And you can see that we can nicely reproduce the results that are in the literature. So what happens we, if we have a hydrogen and a photon in the final state? So this is now slightly complicated. No one has ever done it. So we have done this calculation and we found the probability. Again, the probability in the 1S state is, is the same. No, the matrix element is slightly complicated because we have the bound state hydrogen. One, four means one is the position of proton and four is the position of the electron. And then you have the wave function for the positronium for the positronium hydride. Similarly, we have done the calculation. In, in, in this calculation, we have considered pro, the proton to be static. But after absorbing a photon, even proton can move. It means we can have the plane wave wave function for the proton also. You can see this exponential of Q dot R. So we have calculated the probability again. This calculation was done in night. You can see that. Long, long ago, this calculation has been done and people found the result to be 0.001 in, in one nest state. And maybe even at this level, even, even at a student level, we can see that we don't think so that this, the probability comes out to be too small. Why? Because proton is very heavy. If it absorbs a photon a few MeV, sorry, few KeV, it, it, it won't move that fast that it, that it makes the, prob that, that the probability in the one nest state becomes so low. Therefore, we thought that there might be some mistake in this calculation. 
And the mistake comes out to be in the kinematics in a very basic thing, you know. What they have done is they have calculated the velocity, which is C, speed of light time two over X, where X is a ratio of the proton to electron mass. But in actual, there is no square root over here. And that is a very, very, you know, you can see that this, this is a minor, you can say minor mistake that you, you just have added a square root. But this is a major when you calculate the results. And when we have done this calculation, we found that the probability in one nest state is again coming out to be 93% as it was expected. So what was the, what was the, what was the take-home lesson? The take-home lesson is whenever you find that any, anything in the literature, trust is always good, that you trust that their numbers are correct, but control is better. These are not my words. These are the words of late Professor Jorgen Kerner. He said that trust is good, but control is better. So you can see that we got a control over these calculations. And by getting this control, we found that most of the results that are in the literature for these very simple system, they are not correct. So with this, I think uh, I have uh, finished my 45 minutes. So thank you very much. Now uh, I, I am open for questions. So you can ask any question. There is no time bound from my side. So you are always welcome to ask the questions. Please, Rizwan, thank you very much. Thank you, Jamil. Uh, I hope I'm still audible. Uh, yes, we do absolutely. Have, right, so we do have a couple of questions that have been asked by the online audience. Let's first take up this question by uh, Zayad Munir. Uh, does the same order of alpha suggest that the radiative and non-radiative decays have equal probability? If it is the case, then why decay rates are different because decay rate is directly proportional to the probability of being at the same point. Okay, uh, so I guess he's talking about the uh, decay. PS2. Two. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. PS2 system. exactly. Yeah. Uh, so, Ziad, thank you very much for asking, asking this question. As I mentioned, you can see that in the one case we have, uh, um, uh, let, me, let me minimize this one. In one case, we have massive particles in the final state. In the other case, we have massless particles in the final state. This is one thing. The two photons, they are indistinguishable. Therefore, we divide the rate by a half in this case. So this factor of half comes from the indistinguishability of the two photons. And we know that if we calculate the phase space, then in the phase space, we have the mass of the particle if they are massive. Because if they are heavy, then phase space is small. If they are lighter, then phase space is large. That is the one reason. So in this case, in the in the in the in this case, the other factor that comes from is from the phase space. So the my 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 answer is though they are in the though they are at the same order in alpha, but because of the indistinguishability of the two photon and because of the phase space, which is different for electron and positron from that of the two photon, the difference in the num in 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 the in the, in, the, in the order of magnitude comes, which is around 11 or so. And you can just calculate it. You can just divide the two rates, you know, the, the two phase space. And you, you can see the what is the number that comes. And if you multiply with the, that number to this uh, two photon state, you can reproduce the result of this electron and positron. I hope I, I, I answered your question. Very good. Thank you, Jamil. Okay, so uh, there was... This other question, which is of a more elementary nature, maybe you can just answer that as well. Can we see an atom or a nucleus? And uh, I yes. will ask if people have questions and sitting here in the room, just raise your hand uh, while Jamil is answering this question. Absolutely. You know, I mean, uh, the, the electron we can see always, even Rizwan can correct me because he knows basic, phys basic physics much better than me. You know, this hydrogen atom. The spectrum of hydrogen is the same whether the hydrogen is in the stars, in the lab, or anywhere. So it means that we can see an atom. Now, how we can see a nucleus, even with the Rutherford scattering, you know, you bombard our alpha particle on anything that has a nucleus, and you can see that there is a repulsion over there. So my answer is yes. You can penetrate inside the atom to see the nucleus, and at the same time, you can see the electrons. And even this whole chemistry is basically by the exchange of electron, by making bonds, et cetera, et cetera. So definitely you can see the electrons. And C means maybe we, as a theoretical physicist, my seeing is very different from your seeing, but I, I know I judge by their actions. I, I don't want to see them with the naked eye, you can see. So in mathematically, you can see them. <laughs> Exactly. 
वो ये ना exactly. हो लेकिन बसारत जरूर है जी एग्जैक्टली exactly. मैं कहता हूँ कि रियाजी पर ट्रस्ट करें मशीनें बनती रहती हैं रिजवान एक और सवाल है मैं पढ़ लू अगर आप इजाजत दें तो जी जी आप पढ़िए पढ़िए जी प्लीज वो कह रहे एक्यूरेसी ऑफ ये आसिफ जमान साहब पूछ रहे हैं प्रिंसिपल डिपेंड्स अपॉन हाउ हाउ वेल वन गेस इज द ट्रायल वे फंक्शन सो हाउ कैन वन बी श्योर दैट शी शी हैज यूज और ही हैज यूज द करेक्ट वे फंक्शन एब्सोल्यूटली यू आर वेरी राइट आसिफ इट डिपेंड्स अपॉन हाउ how how precise guess you can make you know but at least when we when, when we prepare a system we have an idea that how the wave function looks by the way even if you make some off guess also then variational calculation has to work much more I mean your computational code has to run for a much longer time but it will definitely give you a fairly good fairly accurate wave function and the and and the um, and, and the energy For example, you can see that in the positronium, positronium uh, PS2 case or even PSI case, I have considered the wave function like Gaussian. The beauty of the Gaussian func wave function is in quantum mechanics is that, for example, if you have a Gaussian wave function in position space, you calculate the variation in position and the momentum. The result is coming out to be h bar, not greater than h bar by two at least. You can to be precise, you can say not greater than equal to h bar. So the Gaussian wave function they have the minimum spread. so that is why i i have considered these gaussian bases but people have considered the other bases also and they have used the, they have they have also calculated the variation energy so my 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 precise answer is whatever you can use you can use and your variational code maybe it, it will take instead of a week inst instead of week it takes a month to run but it will give you a fairly good accurate energy and the wave function thank you very much Right. So we have another. Plans. We can use variation. We have another. Yeah. So there is a yes. there is a question. There is one from Sayal that how many electrons and positrons we can use in the variational method. You can use even for five electrons, six electrons. It all depends upon if this state bound for significantly longer time before it decays. Because if it's it's if, because it's it has it it if its lifetime is very small, therefore maybe it decay before it bound. So the the only condition is that. It, it its lifetime should be significantly larger in order to in in order to get a bound state so you can take 5 6 also please rizwan now over to you no no that's fine thank you very much uh we uh, do we have a question from here yeah come on over and so uh please uh, assalam alaikum my name is shahab जी मैं ये पूछना चाहता हूँ कि ये जैसा कि आपने बताया कि रिसर्च पेपर में कुछ गलतियां निकली जिन्हें आप लोगों ने ठीक किया तो क्या जो रिसर्च पेपर है उनने पहले जो है क्या जिनके पास हो जाते हैं वो दोबारा एक दफा कैलकुलेशन करके देखते नहीं है कि ठीक हुई है या नहीं देखिए बड़ा अच्छा सवाल है आपका आ, आप यकीन कीजिए मेरे पास मेरा स्टूडेंट एम फिल का थीसी लेके आता है मैं भी वो कैलकुलेशन नहीं करके देखता जो कि मेरी ड्यूटी है ना उसकी रीजन ये होती है कि रेफरीज जो होते हैं उनका वो एक्सपीरियंस लोग होते हैं वो यूजुअली नीटी ग्रीटीज में नहीं जाते वो ऑफ द ऑर्डर ऑफ एल्फा चेक कर लिया कुछ चीजें और चेक कर ली रफ एस्टीमेट कर लेते हैं दिस इज हाउ दिस रेफरी प्रोसेस वर्क ना क्योंकि अगर वो भी चेक करने बैठ जाए तो देखें अगर मैंने दो साल लगा के कैलकुलेशन किया तो शायद उन्हें भी बहुत टाइम लगे करने के लिए तो सम हो वो जो है वो ऑर्डर ऑफ मैग्नीट्यूड चेक कर लेते हैं सर्टन अप्रोक्सीमेट uh, मेथड लगा के देख लेते हैं कि रिजल्ट सेंस बना रहे हैं नहीं बना रहे फॉर एग्जांपल अगर मुझे पता चलता है कि ये रिजल्ट अल्फा टू द पार सिक्स है तो मैं देख के कहता गलत अभी अल्फा टू द पार सिक्स तो हो ही नहीं सकता लेकिन जब मैंने चेक कर लिया कि रिजल्ट का अल्फा ऑर्डर भी ठीक है वे फंक्शन एट द ऑरिजन भी यूज हो रहे हैं ठीक है किस को परवाह है कि बाई ट्वेंटी सेवन है या वन फोर्टी सेवन है अनलेस एन अनटिल कोई रिप्रोड्यूस ना करें रिजल्ट को तो यूजली दिस इज हाउ द रेफरी प्रोसेस वर्क ये सिर्फ टीचरों के पास वेला टाइम होता है कि बैठ के दो माइनस साइन की गलती निकालनी होती है उन्होंने ताकि पता चले कि सवाल ठीक हल किया है कि नहीं किया अच्छा सो वी हैव शोएब मुनीर हेयर हु इज अ लिटिल लेट कमिंग ओवर थैंक यू फॉर कमिंग शोएब एनीवे एंड यू वांट टू से हाय सो कैन यू अनम्यूट योरसेल्फ अस्सलाम वालेकुम जी शुएब क्या हाल चाल है
Yeah, he doesn't want to say hi. He just wanted uh, to uh, sorry, drop email, it. Thanks. <laughs> Warikum Slam. I was really keen to attend this, but I just got the timings wrong. I, uh, I'm all this confused with all the time differences. Sorry, but good to hear you and good to see you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Shweb. I hope everything okay, is Yes, please, Rizwan. Uh, is there is there any other question from either the online audience or this uh, audience sitting here? Well, if there's no question, then let's thank the speaker. Thank and you very much, one, Jamil. And is one if you give yes, me go a, ahead. one minute. You asked me at the start what is the. Ah yes, I did. I did. I wanted to know. I, and yes, I forgot about my own question. Very good. Yeah, exactly. Said, but so I never, you the see, question I, is not really it. related to the talk. But let me repeat the question. The, uh, 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 there was some news about tetraquark states or or uh, or even larger states coming from LHC. So what's the current status on that? Okay, so Boss uh, Shubriya is one. Uh, actually, I will just briefly tell you that the first state of Tetra Quark State was in 2005, which was called X3872. After that, the story started. Actually, the Tetra Quark State was the four Quark State. The first Quark State was the first Quark State. The first Quark State was the first Quark State. The first Quark State was the Quark State. The first Quark State was the first Quark State. The first Quark State was the companion state. The first Quark State was the first Quark State. The first Quark State was the first Quark State. The first Quark State was the first लेकिन इनमें जेएफसाई के अलावा भी जेएफसाई नहीं था बल्कि सीसी बार के अलावा दो लाइटर क्वार्क्स भी थे तो वहां से स्टोरी शुरू हुई थी और वो स्केल और वो जेपी जीरो प्लस या जेपी जीरो स्टेट्स थी जिनको एक्सोटिक स्टेट कहते थे क्योंकि उनकी जो पैरिटी थी वो कन्वेंशनल मेजान से डिफरेंट थी तो यह तो एक आइडिया था कि एक्सॉटिक स्टेट होती क्या है और ये एक्सॉटिक स्टेट है ये फिर बैक इन टू फिर ये बेल बाबार ने इस पर काफी काम किया और अब हमारे पास सिर्फ एक्स थ्री एट सेवन टू स्टेट नहीं है बल्कि अब हमारे पास जेड स्टेट्स भी हैं कुछ और कुछ वाई स्टेट्स भी हैं वाई स्टेट्स वो हैं जो आर्बिटल एंगुलर मैंटम वन स्टेट हैं नो दे आर ऑब्जर्व उनके डिकेज भी देखे गए हैं और उनका काफी हद तक जो उनका जो जो आप कह सकते हैं कि उनका जो इनर स्ट्रक्चर है वो भी अब काफी हद तक जो है वो हमें पता है कि मोस्टली इनमें से सी सी बार स्टेट हैं तो एज फार एज द एक्सपेरिमेंटल फिजिक्स इज कंसर्न इसमें तकरीबन अब मेरा ख्याल है कि आठ से दस स्टेट्स वेरी वेल एस्टेब्लिश हो चुकी हैं जिनमें से छह वाई स्टेट हैं तीन जेड हैं और एक या दो एक्स स्टेट हैं लेकिन आपको पता है कि दो हजार पंद्रह में पेंटाकोक स्टेट भी एक मिली थी दो हजार तेरह में मैं, मैं अक्सान याद रखने में गलत हूँ लेकिन दो हजार दस के बाद वो फाइव फाइव क्वाक स्टेट थी उसमें भी सी सी बा उसमें एक चाम क्वाक था बाकी लाइटर क्वाक थे अब उसी सेक्टर में कुछ और स्टेट्स भी नजर आए उनके भी हिंट्स जिनमें अप डाउन के अलावा स्ट्रेंज क्वार्क्स भी हैं चाम क्वार्क तो है ही है एक लेकिन चाम स्ट्रेंज पैटर पेंटा क्वार्क स्टेट्स भी अब कुछ देखी गई हैं तो इन पे भी अगर कुछ आप आप कुछ स्टूडेंट्स इंटरेस्टेड हो तो एक्चुअली थेरी वालों का क्या जाता है वो तो सब कुछ ही कर देते हैं ना उन्हें क्या लगे कि कुछ मिलता है नहीं मिलता ना तो हमने भी अहमद अली के साहब के साथ मिलकर एक पेपर लिखा था जिसमें हमने ऑल काइंड ऑफ पेंटा क्वार्क स्टेट्स दे दी थी उनके पॉसिबल डिकेस भी तो ये बड़ा हार्ट इशू है आजकल काम करने का क्योंकि पेंटाकोक स्टेट को इन ये जो ये जो एक्सॉटिक स्टेट्स हैं इनको एक्सप्लेन करने के लिए कोई एस्टेब्लिश्ड मॉडल नहीं है कुछ लोग कहते हैं कि जी इसमें दो क्वाक दो क्वाक आप उसमें पहले मालिक्यूल बनाते हैं फिर बाइंड होते हैं लूजली कुछ कहते हैं नहीं जी ये डाई क्वाक्स बनाते हैं डाई क्वाक मीन क्वाक एंटी क्वाक और एंटी डाई क्वाक बनाते हैं फिर बाउंड होते हैं और कुछ कहते हैं नहीं ये क्वाक और ब्लू आन के मिक्स स्टेट है विच आर नोन एज द हाइब्रिड्स तो टिल नो देर इज नो एस्टेब्लिश मैथड हर मेथड की कुछ कमियां हैं कुछ बेशियां हैं तो ये एक ऐसा ओपन फील्ड है जिसपे काम किया जा सकता है दूसरा इस फील्ड में जो काम करने की गुंजाइश है वो सिलेक्शन रूल पे है कि भाई थियरेटिकली तो बहुत सारी स्टेट्स पॉसिबल हैं ऐसा क्या सिलेक्शन रूल है कुछ हम लोगों ने एस्टेब्लिश भी किए हैं जो ये बताते हैं कि ये स्टेट तो एग्जिस्ट कर सकती है लेकिन इसके साथ की दूसरी स्टेट एग्जिस्ट नहीं कर सकती तो ये भी एक ओपन एंड इशू है जिस पर लोग अभी अभी काम भी कर रहे हैं और फ्यूचर में भी काफी काम हो गया इनमें जो मेन बंदा है वो लुचानो मयानी है जो एक्स सर्न, सर्न का डायरेक्टर भी है वो ये डाइकवाक एंटी डाइकवाक का, का, का काफी जो है ना पाइनियर है इस काम का और जो दूसरी साइड है उसका जो मालिकुलर स्टेट है उसमें उल्फ जी माइन माइजनर है जो मैक्स प्लांट में है वो मालिकुलर साइड का काफी बड़ा एक्सपर्ट है तो अगर आप लोग इंटरेस्टेड हो तो कभी फिर अगले साल मौका मिला तो मैं फोर क्वाक और फाइव क्वाक स्टेट पे टॉक भी दे दूंगा क्योंकि उस पर मैंने थोड़ा सा काम किया हुआ एक दो पेपर उस पर पे भी लिखे हुए हैं तो अगर आप कहेंगे जब रिजवान मुझे हुक्म करेंगे मैं रेडी हूँ कोई मसला ही नहीं आपकी बड़ी नवाजिश है आप हर मरतबा बुलाने पर दौड़े चले आते हैं ये हमारे लिए बहुत एजाज की बात है बहुत शुक्रिया आपका
अच्छा वेरी क्विकली वो वेरिएशन प्रिंसिपल के ऊपर दो तीन सवाल आए थे अगर मैं चलते चलते बस आप मैं इतना कह दूं जी प्लीज रिजवान आप प्लीज हाँ वो ट्रायल वे फंक्शन के ऊपर आप इन सम सेंस थोड़ा एतराज कर रहे थे कि हमें ये क्या पता है कि ये मिनिमम एनर्जी स्टेट दे रहा है कि नहीं दे रहा दैट्स ओके जस्ट चेंज योर ट्रायल इफ यू हैव द टाइम रिकेलकुलेट एंड एंड इफ यू गेट अ लोअर एनर्जी ओके वेरी गुड न्यूअर ट्रायल फंक्शन इज अ बेटर देन द प्रीवियस वन उसके अंदर कोई आप हार्ड एंड फास्ट कह नहीं सकते कि ये वाला जो है जो अब आ गया है तो ये ही आपका होगा बट यू नो इट्स इट 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 डज गिव यू ऑब्वियसली जो भी एनर्जी आएगी वो ट्रू एनर्जी से बड़ी ही आएगी आपके पास जी तो जस्ट जस्ट सेइंग दैट मच एंड लेट्स थैंक द स्पीकर वन मोर टाइम सो थैंक यू वेरी मच रिजवान तो अच्छा लगा इंशाल्लाह मुलाकात दिसंबर में अगर कॉन्फ्रेंस हुई ना वो एक करा रहे हैं फ्रंटियर्स ऑफ फिजिक्स तो मैं इंशाल्लाह जरूर चक्कर लगाऊंगा लम्स का भी आपसे मिलने के लिए दैट बी लवली दैट बी लवली इट विल बी ग्रेट टू हैव यू और खान साहब को भी कहेंगे सड़कें वगैरह खाली कर दें ताकि लोगों का आना जाना जो है वो आसान हो बात है यार मैं अपनी वालदा से भी मैं अपनी वालदा से मिलने नहीं जा सका ये भी मसला वी वर एक्सपेक्टिंग वी वर एक्सपेक्टिंग यू टू बी हियर बट ओके जी ऑलराइट ओके जी थैंक यू खुदा हाफिज ओके थैंक यू रिजवान बहुत शुक्रिया खुदा हाफिज जी mm-hmm.